In the vast tapestry of Indian mythology, the story of Eklavya stands out as a powerful tale of dedication, skill, and sacrifice. This narrative from the Mahabharata epic unfolds in ancient India, weaving through themes of social dynamics and the Guru Shishya tradition. It explores the journey of a young tribal prince whose unwavering pursuit of archery mastery would challenge societal norms and inspire generations to come. In the lush forests of ancient India, Eklavya, a young Nishada tribal prince, harbored a burning desire to become a master archer. The dense foliage of his homeland had nurtured his interest from a young age, as he watched the skilled hunters of his tribe bring down prey with remarkable precision. Eklavia spent countless hours observing their techniques, his fingers itching to grasp a bow of his own. As he grew older, Eklavia's passion only intensified. He began to hear whispers of a legendary teacher named Dronacharya, whose skill with the bow was said to be unparalleled. Stories of Dronacharya's prowess traveled even to the remote corners of the forest where Eklavia's tribe dwelled. With determination in his step, Eklavia embarked on a journey through winding forest paths and across sun-baked plains to reach Dronacharya's ashram. The journey was long and arduous, but Eklavia's spirit never wavered. Finally, after days of travel, Eklavia arrived at the ashram. The simple yet serene surroundings belied the greatness of the teacher who resided there. However, his dreams were quickly dashed. Dronacharya, bound by the social conventions of the time, turned Eklavia away due to his tribal background. The rejection was not delivered with malice, but rather with a resigned adherence to the societal norms that governed their world. The rejection stung deeply, but as Eklavia turned to leave the ashram, something stirred within him. The fire of his passion, rather than being extinguished, began to burn even brighter. As he walked away, his mind raced with possibilities. The forest around him, once merely his home, now transformed in his eyes into a vast training ground. Undeterred by Dronacharya's rejection, Eklavia retreated to the depths of the forest, his mind churning with determination. In a small clearing, dappled with sunlight filtering through the leaves, Eklavia found the perfect spot to begin his unconventional journey of learning. With his own hands, he gathered clay from a nearby riverbank and carefully molded a statue of Dronacharya. This statue became the focal point of his training ground. Each dawn, Eklavia would approach the statue, bow deeply, and seek the silent blessings of his clay mentor. Throughout the day, under the watchful eyes of his clay guru, Eklavia would practice tirelessly. As dusk fell, he would again pay his respects to the statue, expressing his gratitude for another day of learning. Eklavia's journey to self-mastery was marked by an intensity that transformed the forest into his personal training ground. From the first light of dawn to the last glimmers of dusk, the young prince dedicated himself wholly to the art of archery. He began with the basics, perfecting his stance and grip through countless repetitions. As days turned to weeks and weeks to months, Eklavia's skills grew exponentially. The forest became both his teacher and his challenge. He devised innovative training methods, using the diverse environment to push his abilities to their limits. Dense foliage became his moving targets, and he learned to account for the wind adjusting his aim as breezes rustled through the trees. To sharpen his focus, he would blindfold himself, learning to aim by sound alone. Eklavia pushed himself to master increasingly difficult techniques. He practiced shooting multiple arrows simultaneously and worked on hitting moving targets. His dedication knew no bounds. Even as his fingers bled from the constant friction of the bowstring, even as his muscles ached from hours of repetitive motion, Eklavia pressed on. The true test of Eklavia's skills came unexpectedly on a warm afternoon when Dronacharya and his prized pupil Arjuna ventured into the woods. They discovered a dog with its mouth full of precisely placed arrows, forming a perfect circle without causing harm. Following the trail, they found Eklavia practicing in a clearing. Upon seeing Dronacharya, 
Eklavya prostrated himself before the Guru in deep respect. He explained his journey, speaking of his initial rejection, his unwavering determination, and the clay statue that had been his silent teacher. At Dronacharya's request, Eklavya demonstrated his skills, leaving both Dronacharya and Arjuna astounded. The climax of Eklavya's tale unfolded in the same forest clearing. Bound by his promise to make Arjuna the greatest archer, Dronacharya asked Eklavya for his guru Dakshina, the traditional gift a student offers to their teacher upon completing their education. He demanded Eklavya's right thumb, knowing it would effectively end his archery career. Without hesitation, Eklavya severed his thumb and presented it to Dronacharya. The act was both a testament to his unparalleled devotion and a tragic end to his dreams of archery greatness. As blood dripped from his hand, staining the forest floor, Eklavya stood tall, his face a mixture of pain and pride. Despite losing his thumb and his ability to practice archery as he once did, Eklavya's spirit remained unbroken. In the years that followed, he adapted his techniques, finding new ways to pursue his passion. Though he could no longer draw a bow with the same precision, he channeled his deep understanding of archery into teaching others in his tribe. Eklavya's legacy lives on in modern India through educational initiatives bearing his name, aimed at providing quality education to tribal and rural children. These programs embody the spirit of Eklavya, breaking barriers and making knowledge accessible to all, regardless of social standing. His story continues to inspire countless individuals to overcome obstacles in their own quests for learning and self-improvement. The tale of Eklavya is set against the backdrop of ancient India's complex social structure, which was stratified into four main castes, Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. Eklavya, as a tribal prince, existed outside this rigid hierarchy. The art of archery, traditionally a skill honed by Kshatriya warriors, seemed beyond his reach due to these social barriers. Central to Eklavya's tale is the Guru Shishya tradition, a cornerstone of knowledge transfer in ancient India. This tradition involved more than just education. It was a sacred bond between teacher and student that often lasted a lifetime. The ashram was more than a school, it was a home, a community, and a place of spiritual growth. The story continues to spark discussions about the nature of education, the teacher-student relationship, and the ongoing struggle against social inequality and learning. Scholars and educators debate the ethics of Dronacharya's request and Eklavya's response, using the tale as a lens through which to examine modern educational practices and the responsibilities of teachers towards their students. Eklavya's unwavering dedication, even in the face of crushing setbacks, remains a source of inspiration, challenging each generation to pursue their passions with similar vigor and commitment. His story serves as a reminder that true learning comes not just from formal instruction, but from an internal drive to improve and grow, regardless of the obstacles in one's path.